afternoon. Uh, my name is Greg Spiro. I am uh, serving currently as the interim executive director for uh, infrastructure here at Georgia Tech and INS. So uh, my group consists of about 200 employees overseeing uh, our 400 acres of grounds, uh, buildings, and utility infrastructure. So um, uh, I'm, I'm a Georgia Tech alum, I'm a mechanical engineer, I'm a certified energy manager. So energy and the built environment is, is sort of my lane. Um, and uh, been here for the past 25 years and led the uh, or chaired the working group for building energy uh, for the Climate Action Plan. And so that's what I'm here to talk about today. And specifically, the electrification of our campus heating system, or more specifically, the combustion uh, systems that make up our, our heating system. So I want to first start by talking really at a high level about um, scope emissions, scope one, two, and three emissions. So I profess I'm, I'm in terms of mitigation strategy, I'm, I'm scope one biased. Um, and, and this strategy is really focused on, on reduction of scope one. So scope one is emissions that, that uh, we emit here from things that we own on campus. Scope two being emissions that we're responsible for from the grid, which actually makes up the, the, the highest percentage of, of our emissions. And scope three uh, is sort of the everything else category. It's, it's the um, uh, transportation, it gets into procurement, things like that. So, um, the reason that I'm scope one bias is because it's the thing that we most have control over. And I feel a responsibility to address that and make that a priority. So why is this, this, this electrification of campus heating systems, why is it the most impactful thing that we can do as been modeled within our climate action plan? And the reason is that about 85% of our scope one emissions comes from heating our buildings and heating domestic hot water in our buildings. And currently, about half of our campus is, uh, is served by our steam system that's located at the Holland plant. And the other half is by boilers at the building level. But in both cases, these are natural gas-fired predominantly systems. And that's why they make up um, the lion's share of our scope one emissions. And if we look at our steam system, it's aging. Uh, two of our workhorse boilers at the Holland plant were built in 1952. Um, so they're old, they're inefficient. If you look at the, the losses of heat, of condensate throughout our, our steam system, we're probably running at an efficiency of about 60%. So a COP or coefficient of performance of 0.6. So any combustion system is going to have an efficiency of less than one. Uh, on the other side of the thermal energy equation, we have two district uh, chiller plants, one at Holland and one at uh, 10th Street near 10th and Hemp Hill. And uh, those two systems function together to provide uh, um, cooling to the bulk of, 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 our, of our main campus here. And it does it at a COP of, of, of higher than one. Um, our, our chiller efficiency runs about 0.75, 0 0.7 kW per ton, which gets over four. And uh, it's, it's a pretty efficient system, except for the, the chill water process itself has a heat rejection element in the form of cooling towers. So there's actually more heat rejected through the cooling towers than is sent into the, the chill water network. Um, and it's very water intensive. So we are using roughly 100 million gallons of water uh, every year through our cooling towers in addition to the heat that's going, going through them. And so, um, and that's at a very high cost. We actually have some of the highest water rates here in the city of Atlanta. So it's, it's, an ex it's, 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 a, it's a wasteful process and it's an expensive process. So the idea behind electrification is that we capture that waste heat, that instead of sending um, that waste heat from the, from the refrigeration process into the atmosphere, we put it into uh, water, into pipes that parallels our chill water system that goes to um, our campus and serves the needs of our heating and our domestic water heating on, on campus. And because of our load profile here on campus, it, 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 it works it, or it has the potential to be very effective and to offset over 80% of our, of our heating needs. So if you go back, 85% of our scope one emissions is related to heating and we can offset nearly 85% by electrification. And so that's, that's why this is, this is so uh, poten potentially um, impactful. Um, and we think that we can do this in a cost neutral way over the life of our, of our camp or of the equipment installed. Um, especially when you take into consideration the need for um, renewal as it is. 
I think the other thing to, to, to know about STEAM 2 and, and getting away from it is it's a dangerous system. It uh, uh, it's also has a very high maintenance cost. Steam condensate pipes have a, have a relatively short lifespan, usually about 15 years. There's steam traps that need to be maintained. There's steam manholes that need to be maintained. And the replacement systems that we, and the boilers themselves, require a certain level of, of employee to be able to run to operate those, those systems as well. And what we, we look to replace them is simpler systems, um, systems that have a longer life, lifespan, um, piping systems that, that, that we hope to last 100 years. So when we look at the, the, the life cycle cost of, of all this and the maintenance of it and everything, we think this is a real win. Um, I want to go back to, to the, the beginning, too, and, and talking about scope one and two emissions here. While this system will dramatically reduce our, our scope one emissions, it is true that it will have a slight uptick in scope two emissions. Um, but it's also important to understand that the grid is greening. And we can debate how fast or, or, or how much it will, but it is happening. And in fact, if we look at our 2010 baseline um, versus today, we've seen a 36% reduction in emissions and uh, <clears throat> over one, two, and three. And if we focus on scope two, that's actually, that number's over 40%. And that's because of what the grid is doing, what Georgia Power is doing, and the composition of the grid. So this is happening, and, and, and the shift from scope one to two, and, and again, this is, this is a, uh, it's not a huge increase. Um, it really does make sense. And I, I will also add that, that there is, within that number, about 10% of energy efficiency um, gains that we've done that we'll continue to do. That was also part of our working group to um, promote uh, energy efficiency uh, measures on campus. And, um, and I know uh, it's not always sexy, but I, I find it to be. And um, that's what I have today. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.